guys and welcome back to my channel my name is Bukumi BK Crown so guys we're going to be checking out Zadguru and Zach Nike point of view on religion so let's watch guys yeah we heard about uh, that the Vedas say that don't make any images of the God yeah whoever worships anything uh, which has been created throws himself in darkness mm -hmm. right the difference between Bhagwan and Allah is that Allah says that if you worship anyone apart from me, I will punish you forever and ever. And I will not spare you of this sin. But nowhere in Hinduism's books would you see that Bhagwan is saying, that if you worship anything apart from me, you will be put in Narak, which is uh, the Hindi word for uh, hell, forever and ever. Now, what, why I'm saying that to you is, the concept of God in Islam, Christianity and Judaism is the same in which he feels bad if anyone worships anything else apart from him. But the concept of the other side of the religions, which is Hinduism, Buddhism or those sides, the concept of God there, I think, is more, the God of those religions is more large-hearted because he doesn't say to you that I'm going to put you in hell if you don't worship me. Although, although I understand that it is wrong to worship idols, it is wrong to worship created things. But I do feel that because that, uh, I, I somehow feel that, you know, Basically, God, there is nothing like Him, right? So, why in the Quran or the Bible or the Jews scripture, we are attributing a human uh, feeling to God that, let us say, my father gives me everything, he gives me all the money, and I give that money to the poor people, right? Now, one day, if I forget my father, yeah, so my father will feel bad. But this is a human nature. God is more large-hearted than that, even if I don't worship Him, He should have no problems, you know, He should not put me to hell because that's egoistic. <laughs> Egoism is a part of human nature, not of mm. God, is okay. what I feel, according to my uh, understanding. Mm, yeah. That in Islam, if you don't do this, I'll punish you. That is a human nature. That if the father gives money to the son, son gives in charity, tomorrow the son doesn't ask about the father, the father feels bad. It's human nature, I agree with you. God is far superior, I agree with you. Yeah. So why does God feel bad? Yeah. Very good question, very intelligent question. Inshallah, you'll get convinced. I won't ask you to accept Islamic in public. Oh. <laughs> that we have done the rest of it. Yes. The Quran says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require you, you require him. Now coming to the question. Now I'm making your question more easy. <laughs> Why we have to say Allah Akbar, Allah is the greatest? Allah asks you to say Allah Akbar, Allah is the greatest. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow if you don't say Allah is the greatest, do you think Allah will become less? No. No. Yeah. Whether you say or not, Allah is already mm -hmm. the greatest. Irrespective whether you say or not, it will make no difference, not even an iota of difference. He is already the greatest. He will remain irrespective whether you say or not. Why does he ask you to say that is the question. The question is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the human psychology. For example, your mother has a heart attack. And now, you have heard of a very famous heart specialist in the world. If you know he's famous, he will give you some advice for your mother. Another person who's unknown, he comes and gives you advice. Whose advice will you follow? Uh, repeat again, sorry. Uh, if? if your mother has a heart attack, mm -hmm. yeah. there's a person who you know is the most famous heart specialist yeah, in the world. I would follow the advice of the Special. specialist. Why? Because you know he's number one, he's most famous. Yeah. So the reason Allah asks you to praise him is not for his benefit, it's for your benefit. Because the moment you praise Allah, you will follow his advice. Agreed. By following his advice, Allah will not benefit, you will benefit. Yes. By the doctor giving advice to you, he will not benefit. Yes, you may give him fees, so that way he'll benefit. You aren't giving any fees to Allah. Yeah. So Allah doesn't benefit anything. But the moment you praise him, it is human. When you say Allah is the most wise, Allah is the greatest, Allah is the most merciful. Most wise are. Ah, he gives advice that follow. Most greatest, I'll follow him. Most merciful, I'll follow him. So you'd say all these praises not to benefit him, to benefit mm. yourself. Agreed. Yeah. So when you worship him, mm -hmm. it does not benefit him, it benefits you. Yes. When you follow the advice of the doctor, mm -hmm. it will benefit if you give him fees. Yes. yes. You don't give any fees to Allah. Yes. It benefits you. Mm. Yes. So same way, Allah is large hearted. By punishing you, hmm. do you think he will benefit? No. Why? Why no, no, that's okay. no, that's okay. I'm, I'm talking about Wait, God being egoistic on his own he self. He is not egoistic at all. No, but he is saying if you, if you do shake, then I will put you in hellfire forever and ever. I'm not saying yeah. that he should not punish wrong deeds. But he is putting on his own self that if you associated partners with me, along with worshipping me, if you worship someone else, even then I will not forgive you. That's the right thing. That's, because that's if, egoism. If the doctor says, Yes. If suppose the heart specialist tells your mother, see this is a good thing, have only this medicine, nothing else. Someone else says, okay, have this medicine also. So that heart specialist tells you, if you mix it with something else, the mother will die. So will you listen to somebody else or not? Will you listen or not? 
Our specialist is saying, don't have anything else except this sorbit rate. Keep it below your tongue. Yes. Now another doctor comes, you know, I'm a very good doctor. You don't know him also. Mm. Will you listen to heart specialist? Correct. Yes. Heart specialist specialized, but God is a big heart specialist. So heart specialist you don't want to follow. You don't want to follow your creator who created your heart. What no, kind no, of no, a... No, no. Sir, wait, sir, wait, 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 wait. Let me complete. Yeah, sir, yes. <laughs> Let me complete. Yes, yes, yes. So you, being logical, yeah. when you want to follow the heart specialist, when the heart specialist tell you, don't listen to anyone else because they have told you the total truth. That heart yeah. specialist can be wrong because he's a human being. Almighty God, when he says, do not worship anyone else besides me, he knows that if you think somebody else is also the greatest. Hmm. And if you follow and follow something wrong, it will harm you. God does not want to see to it that his creation is a harm. He is going out of the way to give you an ultimate warning. Other sins, maybe I will forgive. Hmm. That is one type of murder, is one type of sin, very wrong, second largest. But one, if you worship somebody else, you can do anything. You can start murdering, you can start having drugs, you can start raping. It's too dangerous. Hmm. This is the guidance. It is complete. Because he is the creator, he knows no one else is the creator. Now someone else tries to behave like a creator, when God knows no one else can create you, it is very dangerous. That's the reason he says that following advice, worshipping anyone, obeying anyone as the creator, not obeying normally. Normally you don't obey a father, no problem. Obey a mother, no problem. Going against the commandments of Almighty God. Worshipping somebody That is what, that is what I am trying to find out. Is that the right God? Who is saying that if you associated partners with me, I will never forgive this sin. You are taking, it's a catch 22. I am questioning whether a God who thinks like that, is that the correct God? Correct God! You are saying, you are saying He is the correct God, hence why? He knows. Why, why, why? Yes. I have checked up with science. This Quran passes yes. the test. When I put science to your Hindu scriptures, it fails. Yes. When I put science to Bible, it fails. Mm. So even if I agree with you, with my earlier question, mm. maybe this is ambiguous, fine. 80% mm. is proved to be 100% correct. 20% mm. is ambiguous. Inshallah, logically, even this will be right. If I have to put that way. But the other way, if a doctor who saw so the argument would be 100% is correct. 100% of it is proved that it is correct. If 20% ambiguous is there. I'll tell you one thing, brother. Your mind hasn't reached that level. My mind hasn't reached that level. Right. The science hasn't reached that level. Maybe 100 years after, or 1000 years after, it will be proved 100% correct. We are limited. The problem is in you and me, not in the Quran. Now, uh, what you unfortunately know as religion in the world today mm. is just somebody's belief systems. Mm. Somebody believes God is round, somebody believes God is square, somebody else believes he's a triangle. That's the situation, isn't it? And you must understand this. Once you start believing in something which is not yet a reality for you, you are bound to be in conflict with somebody else because somebody else is bound to believe something else. No, 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 I believe in my God but I am not a violent person, I will not fight with anybody. All this is just makeup. If they provoke you sufficiently, you will fight. Like for example, let's say you believe God has four hands. I believe God has no hands. Hmm. These are two belief systems. Tomorrow out of your love for God, you put a hundred feet sta tall statue in Coimbatore city, of course with four hands. But suddenly I feel so hurt. Hmm. These four hands look so ugly because God actually has no hands because that's my belief. So tonight I will go to that statue, I don't intend to cause any damage to your God just to make him the way he really is, without hands. So I just cut off the four hands. Tomorrow what will happen to you? Hmm. You want to cut off my hands, isn't mm -hmm. it? Simply because you believe one thing, I believe something else. As long as people believe in something, conflict is inevitable. Yeah. Because you may say, no, no, we are all brothers, we are all one, we are all, everything is okay with us. All this bye-bye stuff, when we really have to come to a point, when I believe what I believe is right, I will try to manifest it. I will try to make it a common thing everywhere, isn't it? Yes? Once I believe what I believe is the truth, 
naturally I will try to impose it on other people. I don't call it imposition, I call it saving you from ignorance. Yes or no? Once I firmly believe that this is the way God is, I will try to put it onto you just to save you, not to hurt you. But you will get hurt because any imposition hurts. When you resist, I will use other methods to put it into you, <laughs> whatever those methods are. Sword has been used, money has been used, every kind of inducement has been used, isn't it? Simply because I believe one thing, you believe another. Religion is not about belief system. All religions started as a method to turn inward. But it's an inward step. An inward step can be taken only by an individual, isn't it so? It's a very intimate thing, something very, very concerned with only with you and nothing else to do with anybody else. Mm. But when people try to organize this inward step, naturally it gets distorted. Now we want to do our religion on the street. Religion cannot be done on the street, it can only be done within you. Mm. If you become truly religious, you must be beyond any kind of conflict, isn't it? Both within and outside. That is the whole crux of the religion, isn't it? But today religion means conflict. If you utter the word religion, you are talking generally in terms of conflict that is happening in the world, isn't it? This is because you have reduced an inward step into your set of beliefs. Because if you have to take an inward step, you have to transform yourself. If you have to believe something, you don't have to transform yourself. You can do whatever nonsense you want and still believe God is up in the heaven, isn't it? Yes? The cruelest people, the cruelest people on the planet have always been talking about God, isn't it so? Mm. Yes or no? All the warmongers in the world have been talking about God, isn't it so? And God has been helping them. Mm. <coughs> See, the moment you believe something, you have a new kind of confidence. That's the biggest problem. Mm. When idiots become very confident, the world is in danger. Mm. An intelligent person is constantly hesitating with life. With every step he wonders whether what he is doing is okay or not. But a fool has absolute confidence. And when his stupidity gets stamped by God, that's it. Mm. No looking back. Just can go on doing the most idiotic things without any problem about it. The very nature of your intelligence is such that if you do something stu stupid today, tonight your intelligence will bother you, why did I do this? Mm. Isn't it so? But if you get God's stamp on your stupidity, you don't have to turn back and see. You can do grossest things on the planet and not bother about it. Feel very proud that you are anyway going to go, go to heaven because you did all this nonsense. Mm. There is no experiential dimension. You are just believing something. Once you believe something, your belief and somebody else's belief are bound to clash somewhere. The conflict in the world is not between good and evil, please see this. Though people always claim it is so, it is not true. It is always one man's belief versus another man's belief. Mm. So religion has become a problem because we have reduced it into just a set of beliefs. If it was experientially true that you really felt God, mm. then could there be conflict? Mm. There is no such possibility, isn't it? But uh, because you are growing from a belief system, you are not willing to make the effort of going beyond what you have gathered from others and looking at life by yourself, that is why there is conflict. If you do not know, there will be no conflict. If you know, there will be no conflict at all. But when you pretend to know, there is bound to be conflict. Wow! <coughs> the guy's question was, um, if we say we are all worshipping one God, why is it that in Christianity God says, don't worship any other person except me? You no, know, Islam too says the same thing, Judaism too says the same thing. So who, who is the God? So if you're saying that you're, you are converting or you're switching from one religion to the other, are you not worshipping another God except the God you know from your major religion? That is what the man was trying to ask. And uh, Zach and I was just explaining to him that, you know, worshipping God, like God, we only serve one God. 
and now make an example if your son you give your son something won't he come and appreciate you for what you gave him and everything that we should try and be grateful that doesn't mean you are worshiping another god you are not worshiping idol you're still serving god but the man was like why should god judge me according to my good deeds if i am you no know, worshiping another god except from the religion i was before i you know go to another religion we god judge me there's like now was that like it's not so that we all worship on god then it's like guru said it's all about the belief that what causes conflict is the belief of another person's belief is because this person believe in this this person believe in this that's what causes disagreement and mostly it comes when it comes to religion in religion we tend to disagree on so many things in all of this Zayikuru is just trying to say that we should stop causing conflict among ourselves when it comes to religion that all this conflict starts with us we should serve God diligently and we should not think of oh this and that religion should come as one there should be peace among all religions so he said is your belief that matters when it comes to things of god when it comes to your personal relationship with god is your belief that matters thank you so much for watching guys don't forget to smash the subscribe button for more like share and comment i'll see you in the next one stay blessed bye